welcome back to Critical Flick. We're finally filming this video. We've both been sick and we wanted to go over our top five of 2019. So these will be our top five favorite movies, our personal favorite films of the year. And let's start off with our number fives. So my number five is Frozen 2. I absolutely love this film. I liked it better the second time I watched it. The music in this one is just so like uplifting. You just want to constantly sing along. The characters in this one, their, the growth they show, as well as the visuals in this movie is absolutely stunning and beautiful. Frozen 2 was definitely like a shock to me and how much I liked it. Yeah, it's definitely bumped up since we first saw it in theaters. I like it quite a bit more now. It's kind mm -hmm. of grown on me quite a bit. Yeah. So my number five of the year is Rocket Man. This movie really blew me away. I wasn't a huge Elton John fan. I didn't know anything about Elton John. I always thought Taron Edgerton was a good actor. But seeing this, he is a great actor. And seeing the actual backstory in this very fantastical version, it just has some great set pieces, some great musical moments just a really fun movie. At my number four, I have Knives Out. I really enjoyed this movie. I did a review on it, and this movie was a, absolutely a nine in my book. I love Daniel Craig in this movie. He brings the comic. Um, all the actors in this one came to play. I just love the whole clue aspect of this, too, this murder mystery. It was just so unexpected and so refreshing and new to see something that wasn't a sequel. And I just thought it stood out. Yeah, it was one of the most fun movies, I think, this year. Mm -hmm. While it wasn't up there for me personally, I really loved the story, the twists and turns. It was just really fun watching it unravel. It was just different from some of the things we've seen, some of the heavier stuff we've seen in recent years. So, yeah, it was a fun movie. So, my number four is Joker. I was blown away by Joaquin Phoenix's performance. It was one of the best of the year, if not the best of the year. And I didn't know what to expect from this movie. If it being, you know, DC's been hit or miss a little bit. Superhero movies, they kind of come and go, whether they're great or not. This felt very different. It felt like something we were reaching out, trying something that was totally different from the normal superhero formula. The performance alone carries this movie into my top five. At number three, I have Rocket Man. This movie completely shocked me. When I went and saw it, I didn't, like, I knew about Ellen John, but I didn't, you know, wasn't a huge fan of him. I came out a huge fan afterwards. I have listened to this soundtrack probably multiple times, dozen times, yeah. whatever. That is our soundtrack. We go to, you know, listen, long car rides. Taron Edgerton is as amazing as Elton John. He embodies him. Um, I just loved all the commitment he did in this film. He sung. He, you know, just was Elton captured, John. Captured yeah. what Elton John is. It's and really impressive. I just loved how musically... It was just great. It was one of my favorite musicals I've seen. Yeah. So my number three is Midsummer. Ari Aster is just a mastermind when it comes to these psychological, out there, culty, you know, weird, creepy A24 horror movies. And it's something I really enjoyed. I like it quite a bit more than Hereditary. I know people really love Hereditary, but I love the atmosphere. Having this bright daylight situation still be so horrifying. The ideas of people dealing with guilt and loss and just getting over that depression and there's just so many layers to unpack with the film, and I just, I don't know, I think it was just very well made and excellently acted by Florence Pugh. Yeah, as his number three had Florence Pugh in it, my number two has her as well in it, and my number two is Little Woman. I absolutely thought this movie was just so whimsical, and like, it kind of reminded me of the Pride and Prejudice days, and Greta Gerwig really took on and had an amazing cast, and I just love this movie. Yeah, it's really impressive how they were able to take this kind of very old classic tale we've seen mm -hmm. so many times before, made it feel a little more modern, a little fresher, and you have these actors that really knocked it out of the park. The direction was really good, but having these actors in particular showing different ages and different relationships, yes. that's really what made the movie excellent. Yes. So my number two of the year is Marriage Story. I don't think a movie has hit home emotionally for me in recent years more than a marriage story. The acting between Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson is world class. The best acting duo this year, in my opinion. Seeing their confrontations, their devolution of their relationship, trying to get past some of these things that a lot of people have dealt with in their lives with divorce and broken families. And just, they were able to capture that on such a human level that I haven't seen in such a long time that it just really hit home and just just so well done. And our both our number ones are the same. So our my number one is 1917. Yeah, it's just phenomenal. It's a master class in filmmaking and cinematography. And just that one shot, that one take style really just puts you in there with these characters. It's super impactful. Um, you're just along with the ride with the characters in this wartime fair and it's 
It's absolutely crazy. I could not even imagine. Yeah, it makes you feel so immersed in these events. With a lot of war films, the big impact is when you feel like you're there and you understand yes. the severity of the situation. And it isn't made into be like a superhero type thing. These are just regular men trying to survive, trying to get across. They're not, you know, gunning, gunning and running like Rambo. These are real soldiers trying to deal with real events and you feel that reality. The cinematography in this film is absolutely stunning. There's one scene when they're in a village and there's the fire and you see the red and orange glow and you see them running. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, looking. Roger Deakins, obviously, absolutely phenomenal at what he does. But this movie does it on just a different level mm -hmm. for me. When you're having these different layers of events and having it all look like one take, that makes it even that much more yes. difficult. We're not getting these individual beautiful set pieces like Blade Runner or something like that. This is moving throughout a moving and real environment. And having that still look so stunning mm -hmm. is a real testament to his craft. And you care about these characters. You want them to make it to the end. And you want to know what's going to happen to them. And my heart was like thumping the whole time. Yeah. Because the music in this movie the as well. The score is phenomenal It well. goes well with the story. And you're so intrigued on what's going to happen next. It's this, uh, this great movie. Yeah, it just hits on all cylinders. Just almost a perfect film yes so this sums up our top five of 2019 let us know in the comments down below what your thoughts of your top five are what what movies you know ranked amongst the others and remember always like and subscribe we always appreciate your support and we'll see you next time bye, bye.